Hi, I'm Jay. Hi, I'm Marie. And this is another episode of Good Soup After Dark. Uh, this week we have a special guest. Um, not only we have Garrick here, but we have a very special guest, uh, Mo, the protagonist from Trifecta Music Empire. The antagonist? No, the protagonist. He's, he's the main character. He's the good guy. Oh, uh, well, you can know better if you're going to watch the video. Yeah, you can learn more about his name mm -hmm. and his story. And we're really excited to share it with you. Uh, so sit back, enjoy. And hey, if you have any feedback, leave a comment down below. Um, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell. Yeah, you, bell right there. you might you must have make it gray. Please and thank you. And now, enjoy this episode of Good Soup After Dark. another episode of Good Soup After Dark. I'm Jay Gonzalez. We have Marie Ree behind the cameras on the ones and twos. And uh, we have a very special guest today. Uh, in a world full of NPCs, it's nice to have a main character here. Uh, Mo, care to introduce yourself? Hey, how you guys doing? My name is Mo, the protagonist. I'm a recording artist, uh, engineer, um, just, you know, all around wholesome guy. So, yeah. Well, we're really excited to have you here, and we worked with you in the past. Um, we work with you through um, Trifecta Music Empire. Yeah, of course. We're representing TME, you know. <laughs> yes, our second TME guest on the show. We're really excited to have you, man. Um, in the past, we've recorded footage with you. We've done kind of like a, a vlog-style video with you where we had an interview segment. We incorporated some of your performance footage, which... I, I do want to talk about your performance style because I do find that unique. And um, yeah, we've been working with you guys for a few months. Um, I guess we could just kind of start with like your background into your artistry and your music. Like uh, when did you get into that? Yeah, so I was like 12 or 13, you know, freestyling with my friends, you know, going on like valley rides and shit. <laughs> um, and then it evolved from that, from uh, fucking around in the studio, like the first time I recorded a song was with a buddy of mine in um, somewhere in Maryland. Uh, I just fucked around and like, you know, like a gaming headset and just bullshit, making some bullshit. So yeah, um, from bullshit to seriousness, when did that happen? Oh man, I must've been like 19, no, maybe 18. I, uh, I went to a, uh, like a showcase for a good friend of mine, uh, Rue Gambino, shout out Rue Gambino. A uh, good friend of mine, I've known him since I was really young. He's been, you know, he was making music before me. And, uh, but, you know, I used to play this music and just listen to it and yada yada. And uh, he invited me to come out to a show. So went to the show, obviously. And I remember seeing him, you know, perform and how captivated everybody was. You know, they knew his lyrics. They were dancing with him. You know, they were very, very captivated. And I remember seeing that and I was like, oh, yeah, like, that's what I need. That's what I need to do. It, it just it seemed so appealing to me. And that was the first time you went to a live show like that that inspired you yeah, to it? Yeah, that's the first time I, I had been to, like I've been to like concerts before, but that's the first time I've been to like a local underground show. You mentioned that this was like the first like local showcase show that you've been to like concerts, you know, probably like big stars. Like what was the biggest star you've ever seen in concert? Um, I saw Juice World right before he died. Okay. Yeah. And I guess like where I'm trying to go with this is like, it seems that like, it may seem that like seeing somebody like Juice World in his prime, like up there on the stage, that that's not really attainable for like someone who just likes the music, but then going to the showcase, not that it's like a lesser thing or anything, but it's just like, oh, this can be like um, something that's attainable for me. Uh, um, so it wasn't about the, like, I guess the attainable aspect, well, maybe, I guess, but you'll, you'll understand when I break this down. Um, you know, seeing Juice World, seeing somebody on a big stage and a lot of people, like, that's really cool. Obviously, I want to be there one day, you know. I feel like with the smaller crowd, you know, that was obviously at that show, it was a lot of people that I knew in that crowd, you know. Like, it was, like, familiar faces. So, it was almost like the thought, like, Ruben knows all of these people, and they all, you know, are appreciating this song and appreciating this music and performance and yada yada. It's like, I want that. Like, I want the people to, that I know to like, I guess see me, 
you know, it comes along with the name protagonist. You know, I picked that name because I felt like I was more of like a background person. I just really wanted to be, you know, him. You kind of touched on like you felt like a background character. Is there like a little bit more to that story or like a little bit more to why you chose the name the protagonist? Mo the protagonist? Mo the protagonist. So I got the nickname Mo when I was, uh, I don't know, 13 maybe. Me and two friends were out back on his porch and just drinking and smoking that I should have not been doing at that age. And uh, uh, it was one of the older friends. He was like maybe like two or three years older than me. Uh, another artist, uh, he goes by the name Nell. Um, you know, by Instagram at the time it was just some bullshit, like spam posts, yada, yada. And, uh, you know, he grabbed my phone and he was like, yeah, we're, you know, we're going to get you some shoes. We're going to get you swagged out. <laughs> and um, I was like, cool. So he made my username, get it like Mo. And uh, the name Mo just stuck forever. Originally it was, it was uh, Mo Stacks. And then when I was kind of like transitioning to the artistry, I thought Mo Stacks was kind of douchey. <laughs> so I made it something more douchey, <laughs> like the protagonist. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's douchey so much because you said that it kind of came from the feelings of feeling like you were a background character. Like, were there any negative feelings attached to feeling like a background character? And was this a way of you trying to, like, break out of that? <laughs> um, that's a rough question to ask because I have a lot of love for the people who came up with me. And I feel like it's those same people who made me feel like the background character. So, yeah, there's, there's negative emotions there because it's from people that I love. But at the end of the day, it's something that, you know, as being the protagonist, I was able to, you know, making this persona, I was able to move past those feelings. Like feeling like a background character is an entirely unique experience. That's kind of like, you know, that's how most people feel. Yeah. And you don't call yourself the protagonist because you necessarily, it's not that you don't care about how other people feel, but it's just not gonna, it shouldn't affect what your actions are. It's gonna affect your feelings. You're going to care about what other people care about, right? But if you're calling yourself the protagonist, that means that there's some type of acknowledgement that you're special and you're talented. And that's, that sounds so weird saying, especially about yourself. Like, I mean, for me, for instance, like, I, I feel the same way. I feel like, and I even joke about it, like, with you, like, on a personal level, or sometimes, like, oh, yeah, I'm just a cable guy by day. <laughs> you know, I'm just a cable guy. I'm just a cable guy. Like, oh, I got to do, I got to pretend to go work now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's like kind of like my own insecurities about it. Like, I don't even talk to people at work about what I do. Most of the guys I work with are like middle-aged guys, families. And there can be like, like feelings of like insecurity. Like you, do you feel like you're special? Yeah, I do. Right. Right. I do. Okay. All right. So, so I have a, I do have a quick story, oh, but oh, so... You know, you're talking about the feelings of animosity come up. I guess animosity would, is kind of a strong word, but yeah, my cousin, for example, my cousin in middle school, high school was, he's the year, he's a great above me, would be a great above me. And he was the popular kid. You know what I mean? Everybody knew who he was. All the girls knew who he was. And me, I was just, you know, I was somebody who I stayed inside and played video games. Like I didn't talk to a lot of people in school. Like I didn't care. You know, so like, that's where that feeling of background character comes from for me personally, you know, like being in his shadow all the, all these years, it feels like, mm. you know, and, uh, I mean, things have definitely changed now, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously you put yourself in front of people, like you found that you have a talent and not only did you find you have a talent, you're putting it out there. You're not Mo, the background character who raps sometimes and people like him sometimes, like you're out there, you're doing the work. I think it's okay to feel like you're special if you're doing the work to be special. Like, I, and again, like I get what you mean. Like you don't want to like put it in people's faces. I've been a little bit lucky up until this point because most of the work that we've been doing has been, been behind the camera. Mm -hmm. But now like Marie and I are literally putting ourselves in front of the camera. So like, I, I always think about that too. Like when I speak and like, I wonder what like people from Middletown, New York are going to think about me. That's um, where I did most of my growing up. I'm originally from New York City, but moved upstate. And like, I, I think about that. Like, what are they gonna think? Are they gonna think I'm an asshole? Are they gonna know me as the asshole that I was before? Like, like I'm not sitting here like, you shouldn't feel that way. 
like, no, it's good that you feel that way because you're still grounded. There's people who see themselves as the protagonist, but it's like, oh, fuck what everyone else is thinking. Like, I'm the fucking guy. And maybe you'll get there, but not like in a bad way. Yeah, I I feel like for that example, it kind of, it's kind of like a disconnect between me and you. You know, like, yeah, you're putting yourself in front of the camera and I put myself in front of the camera. Like, we're, we're starting to be like in a spotlight, you know, sort of say, but... It's almost like you give the example, like, um, what was the town called in New York? Literally Middletown. <laughs> okay, so middle, so Middletown, New York is how far from here? Uh, two and a half hours. So you're two and a half hours away from everybody that you grew up with. So, you know, you might see them once in a blue moon. You might see them on social media, yada, yada. But the people that, like, I'm around, that, like, I affect are with me every, you know, so to say every day, you know? I see everybody at least once a week. You know, I get around, I fucking, whether I'm, out in public, I run into somebody or I need to go over there for something, you know, like it, it's like, that's where that disconnect is. I feel like. Sure. But I mean, the feelings are still the same. I mean, the internet makes the world, it's bit smaller. And I'm not sitting here comparing experiences. Obviously, no, yeah, you of, do course, different things, of course, but I think there has to be a certain point, whether you decide to stay in Delaware and like really be part of that scene or like you decide to like, you know, expand, grow out, you know, like, I don't know, you might move to LA one day. You might find that being in front of the camera all the time, making music videos and doing performances, you might find yourself in a different spot where this isn't an issue, but those feelings are never going to go away. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like how you handle them. And like, I, like, I, I'm glad that you have a name like this because it does make for an interesting conversation that I didn't write any notes about. <laughs> but it's not an identity like issue. It's just being a person like you anyone with any type of talent doesn't want anyone to look at them negatively. Whether you're an artist, whether you're painting, Marie can attest to that. Whether you're a rapper or a musical artist that performs, like, it doesn't matter. Like, sometimes people look at people with talent like, oh, mm -hmm. you think you're better than us. In that respect, like, yeah. But and I think it's okay to own that because no one wants to follow the most humble guy that doesn't think they're great. Yeah. Like, you're not going to make good stuff if you don't think you're great. You know, you're not going to, like, put yourself in front of people if you don't think you're great. No, you probably make the good stuff, but nobody's seen because you don't think you're great. Yeah. Do you think you're great? I do think I'm great. And just sometimes, like, honestly, this is honestly, sometimes it's hard to feel great with so much going on. You know, sometimes my plate is so full that you know, my mind is scattered everywhere and I can't focus on me. There's a lot of distractions, right? Like sometimes it's hard to feel like you're great if you owe the gas company money. Sometimes it's hard to feel like you're talented when... Nobody's by your art. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's hard to feel that way. And just like, that's, that's a great example to bring up, Marie. Like Marie's been an artist in America for two years. And like, we've tried all types of different ways to like make a living off of this. At one point, Marie, we were market people. Yeah. And I mean, can you attest to like how that felt and like how that affected your feelings? I mean, probably the most offensive thing is when some people come to your table and just like, oh, I like your art. <laughs> my neighbor <laughs> draw too, <laughs> exactly like this. Yeah. Like and you feel kid. and is and this feels like they take your uh whatever education you have whatever time you spend to learn how to do this and just like yeah it's almost like they generalize it you know yeah and the thing is i think people who don't have any understanding of how to create they don't understand it so they said like, oh, my child is drawing or like, oh, my, my neighbor play a piano too. He's a musician because they don't understand. They, if they do music, they will understand. Oh, this, this level, this level and this level. For them, anyone who draw is artist. Anyone who do the music, like any types of music, just to take a uh, ukulele and just like do this, that's musician. You know what I mean? So... When you feel like, oh, I'm good, like, like we're talking about, when you feel like I'm good and you take your art, music, whatever, and just show the people, it's just like, that's great. If you, like, 
how many artists we've seen sitting in the corner and just like, they have art on the back and they just like sitting like this. Just wait for someone to find them interesting. And I fight with this too because um, I'm not, I'm never mind to talk about my art and everything, but I don't push this like, you want to talk about my art? Like, I just wait for someone to see what I did and say like, oh, that's cool. Let's go talk about it. I think for people like, especially like you as an artist or you as a musician, or even like with what we do with the videos and all that, like, I think we have an understanding about all the hard work that goes into it. And it's, it's really easy to fall into the mindset of like, well, my work should just speak for itself. <laughs> but honestly, like, it, no one is, no no one's going to be interested in the art unless there's a story behind it well or like at least you're confident yeah 100 percent. like your point with that you know you guys have seen me perform a few times you know you you see how i'm on the stage and what i do when i get off the stage i try and interact with people i'm very when i perform I'm very up in somebody's face i'm very like I'm very interactive. I think that's that's a huge part of it is you have to be very interactive if you want people to look at you. Listen, I feel like you do get that. Like, I, and I wanted to talk about your performance song. You brought that up beautifully. Like, yeah, you're, out of everyone that we've seen at the showcases or any of the shows that you guys do, like, you're literally, you get off the stage, like, trying to follow you with the camera is crazy. <laughs> but but um, I think you get the idea, like, within your art, then you portray being that protagonist within your art. Um, but if people can't be in that crowd, if people can't follow you with the camera all the time and broadcast what you're doing all the time, like, you have to be able to sell it and, like, sell yourself. And... I mean, it's not tricking yourself to thinking you're better than everyone. You know, I get what you're saying. You have to portray yourself as, well, me, for example, you have to, I have to portray myself as a protagonist every day in my everyday life. And, you know, like bringing back to what you said about pretending to be a cable guy, you know, sometimes it does feel like I'm pretending to be a contractor, you know, like this is something that I enjoy doing, but I'm, you know, the contract and stuff, mm -hmm. I enjoy doing that, but I'll tell you, I enjoy making music and performing and all that way more, you know? So it's kind of like, it, it definitely is weird to like keep a balance between it, but. How do you do that? Cause I have a hard time. I have a hard time. I think everybody has a hard time. I think that's one of the most beautiful things about, you know, the artistry, whether it's music behind the camera or one now in front of the camera, you know, like Marie's art, it's, it's, it's very hard to balance everything to find time for it, to find time for your friends and family, find time for th other things that you like to do, other hobbies you have. It's hard to balance it, but. Do you find yourself giving up a lot of what you like or love to do or hanging out with the people you like and love to hang out with? Yes and no. Um, I feel like there's times where I'm very busy with everything going on and I can't hang out with people that I want to, or I can't you know, play the video game until two in the morning like I want to, <laughs> you know, like, like, yeah, there's times where I can't do that. But, but um, there's a lot of times where I can't, where I'm able to find time to free up, you know, to be around the people I love and to be able to do the stupid shit that I probably shouldn't be doing, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a, is like I said, it's that balance. Gotcha. I like for me in work, it's hard for me to like really, like I do my job well enough. I've done it for a long time, but like as soon as three thirty, four o'clock hits, like I'm out the door, I'm not even thinking about it. And like breaks at work, like, I mean, thanks to technology, I can like literally edit videos on my phone or like think of concepts and like, I'll call, I'll literally call Marie like on a telephone pole. Like, oh, we should be doing this. Oh, this is a good idea. Uh, or I got to call these people because we got to discuss this thing we're going to do in the next week. Like, so I, I think my, well, I think I'm lucky because I do it with someone and I love my wife. So like, it's not so much like sacrificing too many people that I could be hanging out with. And I, I mean, also too, I'm at this stage, I'm 33. Like I've, I've definitely shed a lot of the people that, I don't want to say don't serve me, but don't really, don't really, I guess either don't really support or know so much about what I'm doing or interested in anymore. 
and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Like that's, I'm not here saying that the guys I used to go drinking with are not, they don't serve me and I don't need them in my life. It's just like well, what I'm doing and what we're trying to build, it, it doesn't, it doesn't help. Like I would rather surround myself with people, like-minded people like yourself, like people at Trifecta, other artists that we met in Philly and, and Delaware. Um, I don't think that I'm getting rid of people or like not hanging with people so much as I'm just changing who I am and by changing who I am, like I'm just allowing different people to come into my life. Yeah, 100%. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that's another big part of it besides the balance is evolving. You change, you evolve every day, you know, every month, every year, like everything is different. Everything changes. So it's, it's hard to, it's hard to like, let go of people who unfortunately sometimes you just have to let go of you know do you have any thoughts or feelings marie about what specific well i think for you it wasn't so much that you had to like get rid of people as much as you live in a different country i think i just not really stuck to people forever because you was really right your interests are changed and not every people willing to deal with that. Yeah. Like sometimes you like potato, but sometimes you like bananas. You're going to, you don't going to be around surrounded by people who like potatoes all the time because you also like bananas. Uh, and the same thing. Um, I have my school. I have one specific types of people was surrounding me. We have the same interests. Then I go to the university. I have another circle of the people I w with the same interests. And then another and another. Do I sometimes upset that I don't have a, like friends, like besties from school that I still like on this, like talking about and like interested? Yeah, I can talk about like, what is your life? But there is no interest. I can share uh, what I do and they can share what they do. They don't give me any advice in my work and I can give them any advice in their work. So, yes, it's okay to sometimes lose one type of people because if you not stand in the same spot, if you learn, if you do something, if you do more than, than before, you find the people who are willing to be with you during this uh, specific uh, way. Uh, like my mom said, really good phrase, uh, on the bus station, you're not going with the same people who comes with you on the on the this bus. You go you go with the people who need the destination. So there's a different buses, right? You come to the to the bus station with the one people, but you need a different destination. So they go on the first bus, you go on the second bus, and it's bad that you both come in in the same spot, but then go different directions. No. You just go with the people who need the same direction as you need. Yeah, when it's it's almost like what you said earlier, Jay. Um, you're kind of like it's such a bad way to put it, but it makes so much sense. You're you're you know distancing yourself away from people who don't um, uh, serve your purpose. Is that what you said? You know, it's it, it's such a shitty way to put it, but it makes so much sense in my opinion. Well, it's a lot better than saying that they fucking suck and they're dragging you down. Yeah, well, sometimes they do fucking suck and they are dragging you but down. But a nice way to say it is they're not serving your purpose currently. Yeah, well, euphemisms 101. <laughs> no, honestly, honestly, friends, uh, family, everyone, we use them. We use them. Uh, in a different way not using people is not only like a bad thing. I am trying to get something from you I use you your information. You can give me uh, your support You can give me right and I give you back something so it's kind of like using and if you can have anything from those people What's the what's the point to give them some something if you don't can have anything back? Yeah, 100% Yeah, okay. so uh, It's okay to outgrow people especially if you're trying to be the main character of your own story. And there's nothing wrong with not being a main character. There's nothing wrong with not being extraordinary. Like that's 99% of the world, you know, like that doesn't change you from being an individual. It doesn't change you from having a unique experience in the world. But instead of looking at 
people in a way like I'm better than them, they're not great. You just have plus one strength stat or something, you know? It's, that's just what it is. Like there are certain people on this planet that are talented with certain people on this planet that have a purpose and, or, or an extraordinary purpose. I think everyone has a purpose, but like you shouldn't feel bad, especially like if you outgrow people. Like I, me personally, I outgrew a lot of my old friends. A lot of friends I used to drink and party with, I outgrew them. I outgrew even a lot of my own family. Like, I, you know, and you brought up the distance between like me and where I grew up. Like, I don't think that was intentional and by design, but I am grateful for how it happened. Cause I, you know, you are right. I don't have a lot of that dragging me down. I don't have a lot of those pressures. You know, I might have people in my life that are like, what are you doing? Like, you know, you're, you already have a good job. Like, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Like, if I'm constantly surrounded by people physically, like from back home that say that, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't set up lights in my apartment with my wife and have a friend who is a performing artist, rapper, here interviewing him. You know, I wouldn't be making a podcast. I'd probably be like the other guys, like, oh, another podcast? <laughs> You know what I mean? And like, I do deal with those own, my own internal feelings about that, but I can't let that get in the way. Like Marie and I have real life stuff too. Like we have real life bills. We have real life issues. We have real life problems. And what helps me kind of keep that from dragging me down, I guess, would be that we're trying to use this as a way to grow and get out of that. I try to put a little more purpose behind my purpose. Yeah, I I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, like you were saying, you're you're a, away from home. Um, I think it's interesting that your support, the people who are supposed to be your support system, are also like a like a destructive system for your creative, uh, like your creative juices. You know, I find it at home, not where I live now, but at home that sometimes it's like things that my family say about music are kind of like patronizing. You know, they, they say like, not necessarily like you should stop, like this is a bad idea, but like they almost see it like as if it's just a hobby. Like this is just something I'm doing for fun. Like they don't see like my passion behind it, you know, as yeah. I'm assuming you do. Yeah, my own father will tell me, oh, you should move to New York and find a cable guy job out here. And it's like, oh yeah, let me abandon everyone that I've been working with, everything that I've been building with my wife. Like, yeah, no, no, I'll go buy the house down the street from you, dad. You know, and it's just like, and I think Marie, you've even said this at times, like you can't really expect people to understand that. And if you spend so much time, if you spend so much time trying to explain to people that don't really care for the explanation, you're just gonna spend more time ripping your hair out than you are gonna be working on your craft. Yeah, 100%. I, uh, I, like, I like being with you know people like you and Marie and uh, also my roommate, Kwan, uh, also part of Team Me. Um, you guys are, you know, for Kwan and you, you guys are at least seven years older than me, something like that. Old as shit. Old as shit. <laughs> Especially Kwan, old as shit. I can't wait for him to see that. Um, <laughs> But I, I <laughs> we're gonna put his Instagram handle right there. That's fantastic. <laughs> Old. <laughs> um, <laughs> <Very electric. laughs> but you know, I appreciate talking to you guys. You know, even this conversation here. Like sometimes with the things that I struggle with, you know, trying to like be creative and have it like be a part of myself instead of you know splitting it into two separate like personalities. I appreciate like hearing your thoughts on it because it gives me something to think about. You know, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna think about the things you've said, and it just, it's nice. It's a, it's a nice uh, like introspective on it. Is that the right word? Introspective. I, I think so, and I think it helps that you continue to surround yourself with people who have similar goals. I mean, I'm never gonna go on a stage and start rapping, but like Marie and I are putting ourselves in front of a camera and expressing our thoughts and feelings. And like, there's a lot of shit that can come with that. Well, I think it's, it's almost like a machine, you know, like whether, you know, well, you know, we're not part of a team, but we work for the same machine, you know? So it's, it's 
like you said, like like minded people, we all have a similar goal. It's not the same goal, but it's a similar goal. You know, I want to be a, a fucking famous rapper. You want to, please. You oh, uh, well, I. What's the angle? What, what's my What's my pipe dream? Uh, yeah. I would like, to, I would like Good Soup to be a media conglomerate. I want us to be like a larger umbrella for means of production, whether that's film, TV, music. Um, I've said so in the past. I want us to be able to to dictate culture. Yeah. Um, and right now, like front facing, what we do is a lot of the video production and now the podcast. But I, I want us to be able to. I want us to be able to just. Huh. You're going to blow up and act like you don't know nobody. No, no, no. no. I'm, just to find a, I'm just trying to find a way to say this that doesn't make me seem like an asshole. Like, I definitely think dictating the media was not the way. No, no. Dictating <laughs> culture. Like, and that's, that's not, not necessarily bad. No, that's not necessarily bad because, like, what's out there dictating culture now? Viacom. CBS. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? No, like, I get what you mean. And there's the whole tired phrase of mainstream media and, like, I don't want to make what everyone else is making. Like, I think the point of making something new is to change culture. Like, even with your music, it's not a, it's not a bad thing to want to change the world that you're in. Um, like, as far as like a specific purpose, like I, like, I don't know, like we could, we could have channels like Viacom. We could, we can make movies, films. We can have a studio like A24, you know, like, I want to be able to, I don't think I'm super talented at one specific thing. Uh, I, I think, I, I think, and I think you might feel the same way too, being someone that works with your hands and like you're a general contractor, right? Yeah. You're not like, you might work more specific jobs than one, but. I have like specialties, but I am very well-rounded. Exactly. And there's people who are, who have like a specialty and that's what they're good at and they're the best at it. I think, like, for me specifically, like, I'm good at a lot of different things. I think, like, Marie is good at a lot of different things. I don't know if we're, like, the number one at the things we do, but we're pretty high up there when it comes to just, like, all-around general comprehension of how some of this stuff works. And I think, like, especially, like, the platform that we're building, you know, interviewing people, we started with, like, just, like, on the street or, like, at art shows interviewing people to sitting down having like a conversation like face-to-face -face conversation like this i think we're good at learning i think we're good at comprehending what people we're talking to are saying and i think we're good at taking that knowledge that we get and learning to make our own thing i mean and i think that we can apply what we do to the many different things that we've learned and i don't know if our goals or our objective is going to be one specific thing. That's why I threw out the word, like a media conglomerate, like be able to dictate culture, culture as, as a whole is not just one specific thing. So I, I hope that answers your question a bit. No, I think I, I definitely see, uh, obviously the idea in your head is probably going to be different from mine, but I, I, I see the picture of, of what you're going for. You want to rule the world. <laughs> 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 I think it's more spread own ideas. So we have some ideas, like you with your music, you do the same thing. You have an idea, you want to share this idea with the people. Yeah. And the same way we're trying to do. And um, yeah, our idea is probably going to change. But all this time we can share our ideas with like different ways. It can be movies, shows. Our idea to show, like with this show, our idea to show other people that not only a pop stars, it's interesting people. And not only that music is a music. Listen to other people. Look at this person. Look at this story. And you figured it out. Oh, I like this person. I listen to what they do. And sometimes you, what you see on a screen and what you hear in the music, it's two different people. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, so what? that's what he's talking about or she's talking about. And the second thing what I want to say it's about protagonist. For me, it feels like, you know, if it's main character, 
whatever happens, if someone kill him in the beginning, you know he's not dead. Somehow he's raised from a dad. Whatever happens in his life, you know that's like it's not the end. And because your life's just beginning, you know like whatever happens with you right now, good or bad, it's not the end. There's gonna be like a main boss in the end. And a main boss in the end it's you. So it's like you just make your life a little bit easier with this name. And the main reason why, because whatever happens with you, you're most strong in this movie <laughs> or this book, you're most smart and you survive at anything. So I was like, it, for me, it's about this. I've never thought about like, oh, I'm like, I, I, hear, I hear that you say, you feel like you're like a second, third part on the background. But for me, it's more about like, I, I'm smarter than everyone. I'm stronger than everyone and I survive everything. I think that was pretty beautifully put. Yeah. I um that's that's interesting, like the the like the bounce back part, like the rebound part. That's something I never thought of. And mm -hmm. it just makes so much sense. You know, as being the protagonist, there's things that have taken me very low and I've felt like shit and I didn't want to get back up and here I am right now, bounce back, talking to good soup, Jay and Marie, feel fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was that was beautifully put. <laughs> Well, we appreciate you kind of like opening up to us about your name and all that. But I like to kind of transition to, um, you know, the guys you're currently working with, Trifecta Music Empire. We had Janad not too long ago, uh, sitting where you were. And uh, we want to kind of hear more about your journey and like how that kind of coincided with your journey and your musicianship and how that's working for you now. Yeah, I almost feel like um, everything with TV almost like fell into our lap. Uh, I was at a spot where... Before I met them uh, at the first showcase I went to, I broke my leg, so I wasn't doing any music. I was in a motorcycle accident. I crashed my heart, so I broke my leg pretty bad. Uh, I was out for a few months. I had no music, like I wasn't working. Like it was pretty rough, you know. I was when you sit at home, you're stuck at home. You get like a little depressed. So I just felt like shit. And uh, Janad reached, I'm assuming it was Janad, the TME uh, Instagram page reached out to me on Instagram, you know, talking about like, hey, like we're looking for artists to perform. Um, and at the time I was still uh, pretty banged up. So I didn't do the first two showcases that they had at, uh, at the time it was Oddity Bar. Uh, the third one, I, they hit me up again and I ended up popping out. And uh, it was cool. It was a cool showcase. There was a lot of people there. Uh, it was my first time performing in maybe a year or so. So like, it was like very, like very nerve wracking. I remember being, being very anxious. Um, you can actually see the video on their Instagram if you scroll far back. I go like this to the camera and you can see my hand is like shaking because I was so fucking nervous. And uh, you know, that showcase went on, like I introduced myself to Janad and yada yada. And then I kept coming back, starting to make connections with all of them. Uh, uh, Quan, I was talking about earlier, Quan uh, did the interviews at the time, you know, after you perform, they take you outside, Rucka was behind the camera and Quan would, you know, like do like a little host interview, something short. And uh, that's how I made my connections with Quan, you know, me and him just on the camera, like we clicked. Uh, it was funny back and forth. Like I was texting on Instagram, like, hey, like I have this idea for the next interview, just something to make it pop. And uh, we got close, we started hanging out and then, uh, it just kind of like all like evolved from there. Like I started meeting everybody on the team. I started becoming friends with them. And then uh, Janad approached me uh, about uh, apprenticing for the team. And here we are now. <laughs> so how was that process like? Um, it was just showing up to events, just being part of the team, showing up to the meetings. Like, So the apprentice process was pretty interesting. That's such a tongue twister, apprentice process. <laughs> it was pretty interesting. I feel like it was really more professional than I would have thought, mm -hmm. you know, it was very like, you know, come to the meetings, we're going to do a meeting, come to the show, and then we're going to talk about everything. I had a lot of communication with Janad and the rest of the team about, you know, how they felt about my contributions to the team. I made it very clear to Janad and the whole team that I was going to, uh, that my priority was to elevate the team. You know, I wanted to be able to do whatever I could, whether it's engineering, uh, I built the booth just anything that I could to make it so everybody could, you know, record, everybody could, you know, do what they needed to do to, 
because I'll tell you, man, uh, engineers are expensive as shit sometimes, you know, and I'm going to be the first one to tell you, I don't got the money for that all the time. That's why I learned to do it. <laughs> so it was just, it just felt nice to be able to like, you know, bring that avenue to the team to, you know, make sure everybody could do it. Everybody yeah. could create. And I'm pretty sure they appreciate that, especially like the work you put in recently, as far as just like, you know, you don't have a lot of money for studio time. So what did you go and do, man? I built a booth. Literally built a studio on yeah, that. How was that process like? It was cool. Um, you know, I mentioned before, uh, if you guys haven't seen it, you should check it out. Um, uh, we talked about it previously on Build to Bars. Um, check that out. TME takeover page on YouTube. Yeah, so how was it like just, I mean, you took a lot of the experience you have from being a contractor and you really just took that quote unquote real world experience. Mm -hmm and put it towards your artistry in like a like a real way that really contributes to like the whole team yeah do you want to just talk about that some more and like how, how that process was yeah uh it was really the first time that i've taken on a job myself like that big i guess you know i've done small stuff like i've done floors painting etc cetera, etc cetera, by myself like just small small easy things stuff i can bust out in a day or two you know, this was like a longer process. This is something that I really had to like plan out and like sketch in a, you know, my little sketchbook just to make sure that like everything was going to go smoothly. You know, I, I didn't want it to be like I'm halfway through the build process. I'm like, damn, like I can't do this. Like I wanted to make sure everything was planned out so I could complete this. And, you know, not like almost like I didn't want to go back on my word. Not that I would have but you know you get what i'm saying like i didn't want to say like i can do this and then like you, that now we're faced with something that i can't do you come off as a type that if you start something like regardless of what's happening you're going to finish it to the best it, of your ability yeah 100 percent. i want to ask you because like there's a lot of it's not only just and not saying it's only just building but like there's a lot of like things you need to take into consideration especially with the type of room that it is it's a it's a recording studio with a booth like how did you learn to like work with like the acoustics of the room like was that something you had experience with with your current profession or is that something you had to kind of like go and learn on your own no so um with uh the acoustics of the room i put so when i put the drywall up i put uh silicone behind it so it's a like rubber you know like rubber material so when i put the drywall up so there's not vibration on the drywall as well as i actually learned this trick from uh doing what i do now uh I put it's called rock wool insulation, like in the walls. So what rock wool insulation is a lot of times they use it in sh uh, like bathrooms where, the, you know, the shower is, mm -hmm. they put it against the shower. So in the next room over, you're not hearing as loud, like the shower running. So it was just like a little trick. Like if I didn't do that, I would have never like put it together that I could have used it in the booth. So it was just like, and I looked up other things that helped me out throughout the way, but that was like the two main big things that were like sound dampening wise. Yeah, it's it's really interesting the way like things come together like that. And obviously this is the first time that I've, not obviously, but this is the first time that I've done something like this. So I'm sure I'll do it again. If you need a studio bill, hit me up on Instagram, MTP underscore TME, hit me up. I, I, fucking, I build shit. <laughs> That's great. That would be pretty good if you put under my Instagram handle, I build shit. I think that would be great. I'll put, I'm going to hear that and I'll put that in. All right, cool. I build shit. Jay, if you're listening in the future, I build shit. Jay, if you're listening in the future, put your fucking phone down and finish editing. <laughs> one more TikTok video, Jay. It might be the best one. Marie, if you're listening, stop sending me dog reels from Instagram. <laughs> dog, which breed of dog you gonna be if you be in a a dog? Which what breed? Kind of dog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What kind of dog you are? I don't know. Uh, they. You know, my dog's a German Shepherd, so I just got to say German Shepherd. I don't know. I, I think my dog is the best. So, I, I, you know. The dog give you some kind of like, your dog like your music? I would think so. I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like she's dancing, but. She doesn't run away when I put it on. 
Oh, okay, that's that's really good. Do she gives you uh, some kind of like inspiration? Like just like oh, I'm just like I look at my dog sleeping and I'm like oh, I want to do something like and not not specifically about her, but like maybe not in my music. Um, at least I've never put that together. Not in my music, but definitely in in like uh, everyday life. You know, because if I don't make money, she don't eat, and if she don't eat. I don't eat, so, you know, I got to make sure that my dog is cool first. That's over everything. Yeah. I don't think our dog has, like, any big role in what we do. Yeah, on the logo? <laughs> no, not at all. He's cool. He's chill, I guess. No. Well, my well, this has been great. It's been pretty insightful, yeah. and it kind of gave us a better understanding of who you are, and just, like, Hopefully you feel more solid in being the protagonist. You know, hopefully, you know, you could take these things that you've said and kind of really think about it and even apply that to your art. You know, we really appreciate you sitting down with us and sharing a whole lot about yourself with us. Yeah, man, likewise. I appreciate you guys having me on and uh, definitely the things you said, uh, I'll, I'll be thinking about it. Marie as well. You know, I, I really appreciate it. It's almost like advice. I appreciate the advice and I appreciate the conversation. Yeah, listen, listen, her, his music. Uh, trust me, this guy right here, how he looks like, how he talk and his music, it's totally different, but you will see, you will feel it. Sometimes you gotta switch it up. That's, that's, what's, that's what's fun about life. It's the, the duality. Absolutely. Be yourself in a different, different situations. Be yourself in a different self. Yeah. <laughs> I hear it. Change. It's fucking comic. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I think that's it. Yeah. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Appreciate you. Picture time. Picture time. Picture time. All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed that episode. Um, it was really personal. Yeah, it was pretty informative about like where his name came from. And like, I, I know we spent a lot of time talking about the word protagonist and, and what a protagonist is and what it means to him and in his name. You know, it, it made me think a lot about like kind of us in our own story and kind of made me think about like what that story is. Um, we've said it a few times like in videos and in person like Marie was like a really big motivator for starting this podcast. I was kind of uh, I was kind of the antagonist a little bit where I wanted to push to like help other people shoot more of their content versus us doing our own and giving ourselves a platform and a voice to kind of just speak on who we are. Um, so I, I want to thank you for that because I've, I've really been having a good time doing this podcast and we're, we're excited to put out more types of content other than the interviews that we've been doing. Um, In the end of this year, we want to show you our journey for a year and a half at, at this point. Yeah. Um, what we coming from how everything starts and i think it's going to be really informative for you to see how someone you know or you don't know can grow for a year and a half and also it's going to be really good for us to just capture this uh iconic moment how how everything starts of like a little bit of history of uh good soup production and good soup after dark was going to be a part of it um yeah, I think it's really, really important moment for us. Stay tuned for uh, me and Jay podcast, where we talking about our experience, um, our relationship with the artist we ever interviewed or plan to interview. Uh, and I like to say, if you're watching here and you're interested in um, getting onto our platform, uh, you could reach us, um, Good Soup, underscore prod on all platforms and we'll leave some of our uh, contact information down in the description below and also you're gonna see the perspective how everything starts and probably our future ideas and what we what we looking for to do in the next year
Absolutely. And honestly, too, like, I'd like to kind of get more into kind of like more personal stuff about us and like how this journey has affected me. I know, like, in the past year, like, just working with you, like, hand in hand, like, you know, my now wife, Marie. Um, <laughs> but um, no, just like this journey, not only with like the different kind of content and videos and, and other stuff that we've been doing and the kind of work that we've been getting into, like, there's a lot of been, there's been a lot of personal growth, I think, for the both of us. Definitely. Um, I know I could definitely speak to my personal growth and like just kind of how I prioritize different things that I never did. I'll get more into that later. We don't have to make this like um, like a soft white underbelly interview. We want to a little bit more open up about ourselves so you can understand who is interviewee and how we... The interviewee is the person we interview. Inter uh, interviewer. So we plan to more open up for you know better who's Jay, who's Marie, and how we, how I get here. Um, so yes, uh, we're trying to be your friend, your help, um, because we're trying to make our interview not only um, interesting and just talk to interesting people, but also try to make them educational. Uh, give you some information that you maybe don't know or you don't know where to get. And in the future, we plan to do this more and more um, bigger scale. Absolutely. Like, and, like any business. Absolutely. And we have, we have a couple good ones lined up for you after this episode. So make sure you stay tuned. Uh, make sure you subscribe, like, leave a comment, hit that notification bell. And... Um, yeah, thank you for just kind of joining along this ride. We've changed not only who we are, but what we put out. And, you know, I'm really excited about continuing this podcast journey with you. Me too. Thank you. Thank you for watching. It's really important for us. And we always appreciate and send you love and kisses. Thank you again. And again. And again, again. And again, again. And don't forget that you watching Good Soup After Dark. Pee 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 poo, poo 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 pee pee. Pee 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 poo, poo 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 pee 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 poo. Poo poo pee pee, oh poo poo pee pee. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.